in this unit, I also saw just a lot of bizarre things that troubled me greatly. Like there was a one operation where they were taking kids that were one of the lieutenant colonels, a special forces guy, was a, a Mormon. And he knew that I was. And I found this op that they were sending, uh, you know, the, not an operation, but but prep training. They were taking young military kids who were or were not LDS, meaning not Mormons, right? And they were sending them to the language training mission in Provo, Utah, and to the missionary training center first, and then you go to the language training mission. And then these young men who were actually soldiers were being positioned in various positions throughout Central and South America mm -hmm. or other tier, you know, tier one, tier two countries, proselytizing as missionaries, but collecting intel. Mm -hmm. And right? And, yeah. and no, I, that's perfectly logical. I could that's a that's an easy. I could see them doing that in the Peace Corps too. I think there are a number of different ways to to do that. Peace Corps, I wouldn't dispute. I mean, I, I, that I wouldn't dispute. Yeah. But when they're using the chur a church in that fashion, I I, I kind of drew a line in my my head was because what I went to the lieutenant colonel, I said, "Now, does the church know you're doing this? I mean, does the first president? I would assume they would. Don't you yeah. think they would? That's what he said. He just they dismissed me because, of course, they know. So yeah. that was my first. My first challenge of being a high priest and then being, you know, seeing that kind of thing other than my own hypocrisy with it. Right. Uh, so I wrote a letter to the first presidency of the church and I said, uh, I'm in a position to be aware of this. And I laid it out, you know, very short one page letter. And I said, I would really like an explanation as to why you think that this is an appropriate use of young missionaries, because my issue with it, Sean, was that when I was at BYU, lots of the missionaries that return missionaries that they call them, that they were at in university now, you talk with them and they go, yeah, it was really a good assignment, but you know, I, I mean, I enjoyed my mission, but it was tough to get through some of the people because a big percentage of the people thought we were CIA. And I would go, what? well, that's just preposterous. How could they think that? You're in the CIA? That's ridiculous. But now I knew. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not. I'm not surprised at all. I'm, I'm not like this. Does not surprise me. So I wrote. I sent off my fiery letter demanding information, and of course there was no answer given to it. Uh, right. Yeah, because if they gave an answer, they get in trouble. It goes back to the old CIA adage of we that we can neither confirm nor deny the existence of said program. Right. That's what they do. And I, so I fired off a second letter six months later, referencing the first, and uh, and there was no answer to that. But the bottom mm -hmm. sentence in that paragraph was, if you cannot explain this to me, then I wish to be excommunicated from the church immediately. Uh, that never happened. And I going back to it again, I think that it didn't happen because if they had turned around and excommunicated me, it would have ignored. Would have confirmed. Right. Confirmed right. awareness of the program, which that wasn't really my intent. I didn't secretly put, I was like demanding, like, you're not going to, yeah, you may, you may have been putting crosshairs on your, uh, like oh, yeah. without even knowing it. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Uh, very much. So that was, that was going on. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like subscribe and notification buttons. Additionally, if you have any feedback, please put something in the comments below. And lastly, if you want to watch the full episode of this clip, you can find it above. Thanks again for watching.